What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is Travis here. Today I'm gonna to be talking about auto top off systems, better known as ATOs. Now in this video, I'm gonna cover some of the basics for those of you who are just transitioning from a fresh water into salt water, or you're just completely new to salt water. I will give you the basic information on what they do and uh, kind of what route you should go as a beginner. And then I'm gonna be talking about my own system and kind of what I've implemented from the 125 to the 200 gallon reef tank, and then what I plan on doing for the 300 gallon build. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the biggest thing that a lot of us who are transitioning from fresh water to salt water deal with is the water evaporating from the tank. Now, when it comes to a freshwater system, it's not really a big deal. I guess the worst case scenario is that uh, you start having a film of where the water was previously at the level of the tank. And then as it slowly goes down, it just looks disgusting. That's pretty much the only downside to a freshwater system. And uh, honestly, over a couple of weeks, if you let it go that long, it also kind of indicates how dirty the water might be because you're not doing water changes in general. But other than that, uh, there really is no negative impact to leaving a freshwater tank without uh, topping it off daily. Now, when you transition over to a saltwater reef tank, it's very important to keep that water topped off on a daily basis. Now, the reason for that is as water evaporates, the salt stays behind. And over a day or two, depending on how big the system is and how much water is evaporated, the salinity or salt level within the reef tank will increase to a point where it could possibly kill fish, coral, invertebrates, etc. And it could just be very negative for the reef tank. So that's why uh, us saltwater hobbyists have to have a plan or a system in place that will allow us to uh, continually add water on a daily basis. Before I get into the ATOs that you could use on your tank, let me briefly go into kind of some of the factors that will impact how much water is actually being evaporated from your system. Now, one thing you need to look at is how much of the tank water is being exposed to air. For example, on my 125 gallon reef, I had a closed canopy and a closed stand. I was losing about one to three gallons of water per day-ish, day and a half, every other day, I guess you wanna call it that. And now let's go over to the 200 gallon. It's completely open, it's got a completely open stand, and I'm losing about six to 10 gallons every other day, which is a ton of water. And I figured I would start losing a lot more because I do have some pretty big windows by that tank, which allow fresh air to come in, you know, pull it into the skimmer. It's kind of why I put it where it is. But other than that, it's, uh, it's definitely losing a lot more water because there's a ton of it being exposed to the air opposed to the 125 gallon reef. Now, another thing you need to think about is what is the outside temperature? Do you have your AC on? Again, do you have any windows open? These all play a role in how much water is being evaporated. So long story short, if you want to cut down on the total water being evaporated, cover the tank with either glass panels if you can. I know a lot of all-in-ones or systems that you buy like that have a cover on them, which not only protects stuff from being dropped into the tank, but also cuts down on the evaporation. Okay, so let's go to move on to some of the auto top-off systems you could be using as a beginner. Now, as a beginner, I highly recommend you get something that is all-in-one, and then it also has a fail-safe mechanism built into it. Now, I know Toons Osmolator has a, a version that it has not only an optical eye that dictates the water level, but it also has a float valve in there that will turn off the, the pump if for whatever reason the first switch just doesn't work anymore. So it's good to have that fail-safe. Now, you might be asking, why do I need to have a fail-safe? Well, can you imagine having, say, a 50-gallon drum of ATO water, RODI, all right? And that's what you're using for your ATO. And I'm just making a drastic number to kind of give you a grand picture of what would happen. Now, say that your pump fails on the on position and it just continually starts pumping this fresh water in, and there's nothing there to tell it to turn off, aka the second switch. Now, what happens is it continues to pump, it fills up the sump, and then continues to flow over the sump, and then over time, it, all that salt water starts pouring out, and then your salinity, uh, you know, slowly comes down, 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 and then eventually you have a freshwater tank and water all over the place. Your fish are dead, your coral dead, and that can all be prevented by having a fail-safe, a backup switch, or an all-in-one system that has both of those. All right. Now, before we move on to the ATO system that I have on the frag tank, let me briefly go into why an ATO system would fail in the first place. Now, it really comes down to the optical eye or float valve, whatever sensor that you're using within the sump to indicate the water level. Now, when it comes to an optical eye, it usually just gets dirty over time with coralline algae or crustaceans or whatever. And basically, it can no longer read the water level and it thinks that it's not there and it just continues to tell the pump to stay on. So the best thing to do is to go ahead and clean that either every other month and really just keep, on, keep an eye on it during water changes and clean it with a brush when needed. 
Now when it comes to the mechanical flow switches, those really get dirty quickly. I found that little snails or encrustations like to go on the tube that kind of holds the floaty there and uh, it just prevents it from going up and never turns the pump off. So those really need to be cleaned every month or every other month, depending on your system. But I would definitely check them every water change just to make sure because uh, I've had them fail several times and it's always good to have multiple flow switches if you go that route. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what I use on my systems. Now, on the previous tank, the 125 gallon reef, if you remember my early videos, the ATO pump always kicked on. It was loud, obnoxious, and uh, it was like a running joke for a long time. It got to the point where I just turned it off every time I made a video because it was stupid loud. Now, that system itself was the Tunzi Oscillator Nano, and the pump just got loud because I used it in Kalkwasser. I cleaned it, but it was just dying, and it was pretty much done at that point. But that ATO system lasted me a long time. Now you might be asking, why am I using a nano system or ATO system on a 125 gallon reef? And honestly, I just had it from a previous tank. I didn't want to buy a new one. And uh, it worked out great, honestly, and I still have it. And I'll probably use it in the future, but I'll end up having to buy a new pump. Now really the only downside to this system is it doesn't have a secondary flow switch that would turn off the pump if the water level got too high. But for a all-in-one system that is under $100, you really can't ask for much more than what you got. Now what you can do is if you do have an apex, you can always make a secondary float valve or buy one or whatever you want to do, connect it to a breakout box and then connect it to your apex. Now what you can do is just go ahead and program that flow switch to turn off the power to that ATO if it ever got too high. And that's exactly what I did on the 125 gallon reef. Now when it comes to transitioning from the 125 to the 200 gallon frag system, I passed on the previous ATO and decided to go a different route and make a DIY setup, specifically because it's a temporary system and I didn't want to invest any money into another all-in-one ATO because I already had in mind what I wanted for the 300 gallon and we'll get into that in a little bit. Now when it comes to this setup, I simply use an Apex breakout box, a couple float switches, I made a DIY acrylic uh, float switch holder using a MaxiJet 1200 pump for the ATO reservoir and I picked up the reservoir from the dollar per gallon sale, it's a 20 gallon tank. So all in all, it was about $35, $40 because I really had pretty much everything around the house and uh, I got an ATO without any issues. Now as you guys can see, I only have one float switch connected. I did originally have two, but the second one failed and it's been on my list to purchase a new one, but I did get these really, really cheap off eBay and you kind of get what you pay for, right? Now, uh, if you are gonna go the DIY route, please spend the money on the better flow switches. Uh, make sure you can get them with a shield or cover on them to protect them from snails and all that stuff and always get uh, two of them. Now one thing that I want to mention about this ATO is as you can see the return line is up pretty high and I have it attached via zip ties to the uh, piping there. Now the thing is you have to make sure that the output of the auto top off tube is higher than the pump or water level within your reservoir. If you do not do that you're going to have it siphoned down into the tank and just once it turns on it basically even if the pump turns off the water is still going to flow through. So just keep that in mind when setting up your system. Now if you guys want to learn how I made these brackets for my flow switches, I will link a video in the description below from my channel and um, I believe there's some programming in there as well. If there isn't, I will do a separate video and kind of uh, run you guys through that whole process because I keep, I keep losing track of what kind of videos I have on my channel and I try not to duplicate them. Uh, it's just uh, with, with that many, you kind of forget what's going on. But uh, I will do my best to find out and put that stuff in the description below. Now before I let you guys go, I briefly want to talk about what I'm going to be using on the 300 gallon reef. Now I've decided to go with the Neptune Apex ATK and a lot of you guys figured I was going to do that in the first place, but I really haven't said much about it. Now I already picked it up, it's sitting on my desk right now. I'm going to go ahead and do an unboxing, install and programming video for you guys this week and show you that on the 200 gallon reef. Just like the NIOS Quantum 300 Protein Skimmer, we're going to be doing it a little bit early. but. All this stuff will be going over to the 300 gallon build once we start that here in a few months. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you found it to be somewhat entertaining and you got something out of it. Now, if you do like this video and you want to support this channel and you want to support the new 300 gallon build, please go ahead and purchase coral from my website. I definitely appreciate it. There's tons of coral left to be sold and I'll be doing sales for the next couple months to gather funds for that new build. Now the 300 gallon build is about $8,000 total right now that I need to save up in order to get everything I need and that is with uh, discounts, uh, sponsorships, everything. There's just a ton of stuff going into this tank and uh, there are going to be hundreds and hundreds of videos coming from this new reef tank. So. By purchasing coral and supporting that build you are supporting the channel allow me to provide you with content all right either way guys thanks again for watching the video if you'd like to give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe for more and i'll see you next time